Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? 90% attendance at OTAs. Is, is mm -hmm. that good? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, and I think uh, a, a, a quite a contrast from uh, the first OTA we were able to see last offseason where uh, attendance numbers had dipped. Um, there was still kind of a weird energy from the previous head coach, the new head coach, and kind of figuring himself out. He was a defensive coordinator and not quite, uh, you know, I don't think he had really kind of found himself in terms of how he wants to be in front of a guy group of guys that had seen him as a coordinator now the head coach this year different level of comfort uh different level of attendance obviously um so certainly good to get those guys on the field and repping things out uh, as quickly as possible you know as they say it's where the building blocks of chemistry begin so uh can't be bad to get 80 of 89 players uh at otas when they're all voluntary especially the low numbers that you had a season ago Hey, Sean, when you go out there, look, I mean, you've covered this team for a long time. Like, when you go out to OTAs, what do you like? What do you look for? Depends on the year. This year was, without a doubt, Derek Carr. I mean, it was, it was Derek Carr. And then, obviously, I was really looking for the energy because I, I, I can't – last year, it was so weird. It just it was, it was an odd – like, it was like the overhang of, of the previous era. It was weird, the energy. This year's is much different, and I think a lot of that had to do with the presence of Derek Carr. It's just – I think he's got an engaging personality to begin with. He's, a, he's an energy-type guy. Uh, I think the organization certainly feels like they have their guy. And I think it kind of permeated uh, throughout, really, the entire practice where it just, just felt it wasn't crazy rah-rah stuff, but it had a little more life. Mm. Um, and I, certainly that was overarching big picture. And then specifically, I mean, look, it's a new franchise quarterback. I, just, I, was, I was watching him quite a bit uh, throughout practice. Yeah, what, what stood out about Derek Carr? What you notice? Uh, well, A, um, I thought executing plays and what he was doing, it felt like uh, there were minimal mistakes, and he had a pretty decent day, especially when you consider where he is in terms of his football playing career. This new organization, he's had his, his entire life in one organization, uh, NFL life anyway. Um, so it felt like in that regard, it was pretty good, his on-field execution. The ball didn't touch the ground. Oh, it, was, it was short passes except for two. Um, and a, a lot of basic stuff, but nonetheless, you know, it, it could have gone worse and it did not. I thought it went fairly well, but the big thing that stood out to me about him was how much he was talking and communicating the players and coaches before and after every single play. And even when he was on the sideline, I think it's pretty clear he's trying to expedite the learning curve and get on the same page with everybody as quickly as possible, going through as many scenarios as quickly as possible. Um, and it just felt like he was really communicating a lot. We even asked him, you know, afterwards, you know, uh, if this is where the, the chemistry is built. He said yes, and he goes, right now I'm just asking a lot of questions. And that was obvious because, I mean, mm -hmm. he was really talking a lot uh, during practice on Tuesday. He's on Twitter at Sean Fazan, Fox 8. Uh, you mentioned the the weird energy a year ago and how much looser it seemed this year, or different it was this year. Uh, what else did you notice, Dennis Allen, like year two for Dennis Allen? In what ways does this maybe look different than it did a year ago? There's a quiet confidence about him right now. Um, I think he's a little more comfortable in his own skin. I think there was, you know, when you do the whole, you know, hire the top assistant to be the head coach, I mean, there, there could be a little bit of a, well, am I doing too much? Is it, is it, am I not doing enough? I, I, don't, I don't think he ever quite got fully comfortable uh, until some point in the season. This year, I just feel like he is much more comfortable in his own skin. I think he's got uh, more of the players that he wanted. I think he's filtered out the coaching staff. You know, some went on their own, but some I think, you know, uh, he, he moved on from. He was able to bring some more of his, his own guys in. It just feels like this is now officially Dennis Allen's team. And then it was the weird energy last year with Sean Payton doing media. and He was always out there. <laughs> yeah. I called it the ghost of Sean Payton. That's all gone. So I just, I just think it's a little clearer for Dennis Allen. I just think he's a little more comfortable and, and got a quiet confidence about him. And when I ask you about Foster Morrow, the football mm -hmm. player, we've talked so much and obviously about mm -hmm. the diagnosis, how remarkable it is that he's out there. But what does Foster Morrow, the football player, bring to the Saints at a position that they have valued for a long time? Yeah, it's a great question because if you didn't know any better and just went out to watch, A, you'd never know 
Foster was dealing with what he's dealing with health wise. And B, you would never know he was a new player. Um, seamless fit just in terms of uh, what he's able to do, how he blended into practice. It was only one, but um, he just he just fit right in, and maybe that has something to do with the quarterback that he that he's been playing with for the last couple of seasons. But as a pure football player, he is mostly a wide tight end and inline tight end. Um, but he is an upgrade over what they had at that position. They wanted a steady guy at that inline tight end position. They were hoping and hoping it was going to be Adam Troutman. It never never materialized. Juwan Johnson became kind of the the pass catching tight end, and they were hoping Troutman could be developing into something. It never did. Morrow has a Troutman skill set, but is much more of an upgrade. Much He's a solid player. He does a lot of things well in terms of blocking, uh, running routes. He's probably underrated in terms of the route tree he actually runs, especially if we go back and watch the tape last year with the, with the Raiders. And I just think he checks a lot of boxes. He's never going to lead a team in receptions, but I think he does a lot of things well. You know, if you're looking for a comparison, maybe a, a Josh Hill type that really – you know, was never a star, but was always a guy that everybody trusted. I think Foster Morrow can be that guy. Sean, uh, I also noticed that you had, wasn't it four starters on the offensive line absent? It, it's Cesar Ruiz still battling a foot injury. Any of this a concern at this point? Not yet. Um, because, you know, it's still OTAs, and honestly, I, I don't really pay too much attention to the line of scrimmage during OTAs or even minicamp without pads. But if this lingers into training camp, yes. I mean, it, it could be a concern. Penning and Ruiz was both late in the season. Their injuries, they were both out there, but not obviously participating in anything. They want Penning to be the starting left tackle. Um, but he's got to get healthy and prove it. Um, Hurst was not there as well. Ramchek wasn't there, but I mean, you know what Ramchek can bring. Um, and then Ruiz, that's an interesting one. They didn't pick up the fifth-year option. They've got a couple guys behind him that I know they like. Maybe not as good as Ruiz, but certainly maybe could be uh, a player that they trust at that position. Um, I do know this: injuries along the line of scrimmage can derail a team um, if you get too many of them. So the hope is they recover, but not just recover, recover and are able to remain durable throughout the season because that can really that can really set you back um, if you're not too careful about it. So yeah, that's certainly something to watch going forward. Um, we're not at the point of concern yet. I guess talk to me in August if they're still, you know, on the sideline, uh, not doing anything, then maybe we have a concern. Sean, I can't let you go without asking at least one defensive question. So, top defensive storyline coming out of OTAs. Well, I I, I thought uh, Cam Jordan being there was certainly something. I mean, you talk about a lot of uh, other, I guess, quote unquote, bigger name players weren't there, and Payson, Kamara. Uh, Lattimore, uh, Cam Jordan was there, even had a tackle for loss. I certainly think his energy uh, rubbed off on some of the uh, younger players and, you know, Falski and uh, and Brian Brzee. So I, I like the fact that Cam Jordan was there, but he's a football junkie. You knew he was going to be there, uh, and he always just showed up to OTAs. And then, honestly, I'm starting – I'm going to be careful how I say it. The safety position coming together quickly is a huge – it, it, it will it will help the entire defense, and I think Matthew and May being present, um, developing that chemistry uh, early in the off season program because Matthew had even admitted he just wasn't there at this point last year, um, and even well into training camp. That you know that cohesion coming together quickly or quicker this season can certainly help the entirety uh, of the entire defense. And I do think this secondary has the potential to be one of the one of the best secondaries the Saints have ever had. I mean, they're that deep and they're that talented. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will all, you know, come to fruition and it shows up when the games matter in a couple of months. He is Sean Fazan from Fox 8 on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox 8. Y'all give him a follow. Appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. All right, buddy. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.